Richard, what's up, man? Can you hear me? Hey, Ralph. Yeah, I can hear you. Can How's you it going? Me? Yeah, I can hear you, man. How's it been going? Good. Uh, going great. Now, as usual. let's just get Typical. right into it because I know we don't have much time. Uh, okay. So, first off, I don't know if you know about the debate today, uh, Medicare versus Fuentes. I saw somebody asking you about it on Twitter. but I don't know who Medicare is, but uh, is the debate over whether – Nick is right to be flagging the hell out of people he dislikes on YouTube. Is that basically the debate? <laughs> well, yeah, they have tried to make flagging, I guess, the the crux of it. I think it's mostly going to be about – I mean, I'm sure that will come up, but I think it's mostly going to be about uh, Medicare being a fake – faggot but uh i'm biased in this debate so i can't obviously i'm biased i'm pretty sure you're probably biased too uh maybe on the other the other way around uh which is fine i don't know medicare <laughs> might be so horrible that i somehow have an affection for nick flintes we'll see well we'll see you know what watch it after but uh, gonzalo lira uh was found yeah. uh, well I, I mean i don't even know he said he was picked up by the sbu and now that he can't leave the city, basically he's under house arrest or whatever. He was missing for a week. I recently said if we didn't see him by Friday, he was dead, and he showed up, sure enough, Friday morning. What do you think? Is it phony? Did he even get picked up? Like, what's going on with this? I don't know. Well, I don't know. I See, I, I knew Gonzalo Lira. Um, I, I, I I spoke with him many years ago. It, it was, I think, actually even more than 10 years ago when I first talked to him, and it was in the kind of post-Ron Paul era and he was then going by Gonzalo Lira, and he was he had a blog where he talked about a lot of Ron Paul stuff, like hyperinflation and uh, gold standard and Fed policy and all this kind of stuff. And I found him interesting. I, I was kind of more into that uh, many many years ago. And uh, I've, I've spoken with him. He, he struck me as a very nice guy. I mean, I, I don't have any issue with him really, and I liked him. He's a good natured guy. Now, I lost touch. Um, we have not spoken for many years now, probably, oh, my God, I mean, seven, I don't know, I at least five years. And I didn't even know that he had rebranded as Coach Red Pill. But I have to say that uh, just the name itself makes me highly skeptical. <laughs> uh, just this, like, you know, lifestyle guru – I'm going to red bill you on whatever women or I don't know. It just strikes it. I get the grift vibes from just the name itself. Um, so, but I don't know. Again, I don't really, I, I, when I knew him, I liked him. So I don't, you know, and I certainly wish him the best. I, I don't. Now, do you know what he was doing? Let, no, wait, let me tell you. Do you know what he was I doing? I do know what he was doing in Ukraine. Cause I, I, that's when I reconnect. Did, or I, uh, I didn't talk with it, but I saw his his postings in Ukraine. They seemed rather dubious and unsourced. Well, they seemed rather reckless that, as well, right? Like, I mean, I whether they were the God's gospel, or it wouldn't even matter. Like, I don't know. It was kind of dangerous, I would say, to be doing some things like that in Ukraine. Oh, it's, it's dangerous. You don't have a right to be a fucking dissident. I mean, I, I don't know what to say. And look, you are a foreigner who has moved to a country and then you are supporting an invading army. I mean, you do not have a right to do that. I'm sorry. And you are going to get imprisoned or killed. And yeah, the cliques are really great. And most of the alt-right or dissident right or whatever was pro-Russia or anti-West or, you know. And so you're going to get cliques. You're going to seem like a dissident and, and so on. But there's just no other – in any – other century someone would simply come and kill you right and you know i mean like i don't know what to say there are people who i admire and agree with who were imprisoned during war because they were on the wrong side it is what it is and if i were you know in charge of ukraine i would have had him imprisoned there's no question that's what i said and again of course we're more pro russia on the show and you know that and et cetera, et cetera sure. the chat that being said, you still got to put yourself in, you know, Ukrainian leadership's shoes or, you know, SBU oh, yeah. shoes. And it's like, pick this guy up. St shut this guy up. You know what I mean? Like, I, he's, he's engaging in demoralization of your yeah. country. While Openly. Living, while enjoying it, you know. Yes. He's, he's renting an apartment. He's using public transportation or whatever. I mean, he's. He's taking advantage of your country. You just don't have a right to do that. You just don't. And it's like we, we feel so entitled on the Internet at this point where it's like I have a right just to do whatever I want. And it's just like, okay, 
but there are there really are limits and if you are this isn't a video game like this is an actual war people are dying people are fighting people are engaging in nasty behavior there's always war crimes and war you know so like either this is what he should have done he should have said i need to leave or i need to be silent or i need to go join the ukrainian resistance or whatever uh but like <laughs> those are your choices like just be silent you know i mean that that you well, know definitely don't be he was saying some really incendiary things dissident. yeah he was saying and it would it went beyond just wink wink pro russia it was like Zelensky's corrupt name and name you know what i mean going through corruption webs and all this yeah. stuff and i'm like dude what are you trying to get killed <laughs> like honestly and again, I don't. I don't even know. If, I was about to say credit to the Ukrainians for killing him, but I think it might be a mark against him that he's not. <laughs> like I don't. Like what? What in the world? How's this guy running around there? Like I. I, I don't know. I'm like, surprised because you know you again. I, I I saw that report that like the Azov battalion yeah. had killed him, and they had like the Chad Azov battalion <laughs> and Virgin Coach Redpill. Um, but apparently that didn't happen. I mean, if he's alive. No, I saw he's something alive. this morning. He's, yeah, he's alive, alive he's right? Alive. Yeah, he's definitely alive. Yeah. All right, so was it all a hoax? Well, um, he said that he was picked up by the SBU and was, um, you know, held, um, I guess, prisoner or whatever while yeah. they investigated. Now, we did a champagne party the other day uh, on the announcement that he might be gone. Of course, we wanted to honor his memory here uh, on the kill stream. Richard, you know how we do. All right, well, I, <laughs> again, I'm not in support of that. Well, you know what? I even said on that show, I said the funniest part would be as if he's alive, right? Like, that'd be the best thing <laughs> is if he's still alive somehow. And then, of course, this morning we woke up and he was alive. Now, my next question is, was it a hoax altogether, Richard? Because when I first heard about it, I didn't believe he was dead or even, like, consider that thought until a couple of days ago because this is exactly something that he would do, right? Fall off the grid for a couple of days and then it, say it he got picked up. It is a way of doing it. Now, yeah. keep in mind, 2014, so uh, I was in a similar situation. And uh, we were doing a conference in Budapest and it, it was, it was kind of, I, I, I do sometimes feel like mainstream people like redo what I do, but take out like the racial component. And then they're like, Oh, look at this new idea I have. Um, but we went to Budapest when there was Victor Orban there and it was, it was not pro Orban. We actually had arranged to meet with someone of a job party. I it's, it's, it was a long time ago. I have all these criticisms of what I was doing then. But anyway, um, it, you know, it was it was a kind of like pro-European event. Dugan was going to be there. Um, I was there, a number of other people. And Viktor Orban just cracked down on it. Now, I think that was – and I'm not just saying this because it's personal bias. I think that was unfair because – Basically, we were tourists coming into his country. It's not a wartime. We're not trying to subvert his country. Um, and, you know, the media went crazy about it. But whatever, you know, I, I, I think that he made the wrong call. But, you know, I was arrested and detained. I spent a weekend I remember in the yeah. detention center, or, you know, quasi-prison. It was more of a – you know, I was there with all these guys who were um, about to be released. So everyone was very peaceful. Um, uh, no rape. Uh, that's why it's better to be in county jail than prison because most of those people are trying to get out of jail, right? They're trying to get out of everyone was very, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, peaceful. I, I was thinking, like, when I go into prison, like, do you have to go and just like viciously beat someone up so that you like prove <laughs> yeah, that just you're just walk up like in the love, movies, leave you alone? Uh, but no, it was, it was, uh, it was a bunch of Asian drug runners, as weird as that sounds. And they were, of course, claiming innocence. One guy claimed he was like, I was driving into Hungary and like they opened my trunk and there were drugs in the car and someone had put the drugs in the car. I was like, <laughs> you don't have to lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's happened to me. What do you mean? <laughs> but, uh, but like, look, I disagree with the decision. I strongly disagree with it. But at the same time, I have no rights, you know, like I don't, you know, obviously if he had killed me or something, that's just totally insane. But at the end of the day, when you go to a another country, I mean, you are a visitor and you've got to play by their rules. I, 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 I thought he was in the wrong, but I can't like, you know, say that that was a violation of my rights. I don't have any rights in Hungary. So I, I don't know. I, I just, I, I, again, 
I knew Lyra like seven years ago. I generally liked him. I have nothing. I don't wish for his demise and I don't have any unkind things to say about him, but this type of behavior just strikes me as he's asking for it. So I, I just have to call it out. It's some death wish type shit. And I know there's been some speculation that, and he said he had some kind of heart condition and he was going to die in a couple of years. Now, again, that's coach mm. Red Pill saying that. So I don't, you know, if they found some video where he said that a year ago or something. I don't know. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. Uh, but that would explain a little bit because it does seem like some death wish type stuff because I just don't, if I was running Ukraine, he would have been dispatched, uh, with prejudice, uh, very quickly, not, not doing live hits for RT news. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I agree. I, I just, it's not I because obviously I don't like him, but like, him. I would have simply. Well, take, put him in jail, right? right? Like, I mean, yeah, you don't have to yeah. kill him necessarily, uh, but shut right. him up. It appears that they uh, did shut him up. I don't think he's going to be doing any more uh, live hits no. for RT News uh, anytime soon. No. But uh, I appreciate you coming by. Now, what do you got? I know you, you sure. didn't have much time, so I'm not going to keep you too long, but uh, what do you got going on? Promote your stuff, et cetera. Well, uh, you should subscribe to my Substack, <laughs> as everyone says. But uh, no, I'm, I'm, I shouldn't say it in that voice. You should literally subscribe to my Substack. So Substack's uh, awesome. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm. Yeah, just look up Radix Journal on Substack, and that's that's kind of how I'm doing things these doing things these days. And um, yeah, I just got some stuff in the works. New book will come out in June, and uh, so yeah, just that that kind of stuff. Very cool. Richard Spencer, we'll get you back next month for a full cool. show. Uh, I hope if you got the time. Uh, and I do. Very in good. May I have the time. All right. We'll see you in May. Thank you, Richard Spencer. All Talk right. to you soon. See ya. Ciao. Very well. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Go Fair. Remember to like and subscribe.